Hello, Tooth and Claw listeners. We got... Toothies. <laughs> toothies. Yeah, that's right. I'm glad you finally said it for once on you. <laughs> <laughs> we broke you down. Yes, uh, you we did. got my favorite podcaster in the world, Wes Larson, with us. Oh. And my second favorite podcaster in the world, Mike Smith. And I'm Jeff Larson. Hey, We guys. are Tooth and Claw Podcasts. For anyone joining right now, we talk about animal stories, a lot of attack stories on humans, and we love animals. And we like to give, uh, Wes, Wes gives a scientific approach to why animals like attack, right? <laughs> That's the worst description. But yeah. This is pretty uh, good. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Uh, yeah, we talk about animal attacks, and we try and and we're trying to tell these stories in a way that doesn't demonize the animal. Like often, when you see these stories in media, it talks about how the animal's bloodthirsty or monstrous or something like that. And we're trying to show that often it's the animal responding to something that the person did wrong. So bringing in the science behind these these kind of incidents. So yeah. And and we're bringing we're bringing the fun at the same time. Me and Wes are scientists. Mike's a <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> well, I am a scientist. Uh, Jeff's a co-host, and Mike's a co-host slash producer. I did one of those volcanoes in elementary school. I'm a burgeoning scientist. <laughs> yeah, aspiring no. with baking right. soda. Doesn't count. Red what are you talking about? I won water. that competition. You want to see that ribbon? <laughs> My teacher thought it counted. You guys want to hear about something really dumb I did this week? Yeah. Yeah. So on Sunday night, I was just eating dinner and I get a text from my bank. It's from US Bank. And it said there was fraud on my account. Like someone had charged $900 to some cryptocurrency exchange. Mm. And so it said reply yes if this, or it said reply no if you made this, if you didn't make this thing and yes if you did. So I replied no and immediately I get a call. And it says that it has the U.S. bank number. I like Googled it to make sure it was the right number. And then this guy starts running me through all this stuff, sending me codes saying like, okay, what's the code that you got? And then asking me the last four of my social and everything. And then like, yeah, someone did try to use your card. We're going to wipe your information off their phone. We're going to have to issue a new card, all this stuff. So what's your pin, you know, and what's all this stuff? Oh, no. And just like running me through it. And at one point I was like, hey, are you actually from U.S. Bank? I just need to know. How do I verify? And he's just like, oh, yeah, our number's non-replicatable. You can just look it up. And I was like, all right. And so I give him all my information. And then I get off the phone. I was like, that felt a little weird. And so I call my bank, and they're just like, yeah, that wasn't us. Oh. <laughs> and he had already, Pwned. like, charged a bunch of stuff on Target, and I had to, like, shut down all my accounts oh, gosh. and just, like, burn it all to the ground. And yeah, they got you. You know, they yeah, got you. Got pwned. They tricked me. He kind of so the number. How did the number say it was real? They can replicate it. Like they can. the The person at my bank was just like, "Yeah, they can replicate our number." Oh, weird. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. They, so they canceled the charges. I think I'm gonna get everything back. I mean, it's gonna be a huge hassle for me. But I don't know. He kind of like. Maybe deserves he a little bit earned it. of what, yeah. <laughs> There's a good scam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should have let him keep like half the stuff he bought at Target. He's like, you got me. Fair, yeah. fair play. I felt pretty dumb. And then it sucks. I'm in Ecuador. So I was like, I was about to lose service for like four days. Pretty yeah. Much. <laughs> it's like so much harder to figure anything out. Oh, yeah. Out. I told the woman's like, you should go into the branch tomorrow and get this all sorted out. I'm like, well, I, I can't really do that for a couple weeks. So Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I had that where it wasn't like the same, but it was like this girl and we actually started dating and I had never met her or seen her and okay. all of her pictures seemed like pretty photoshopped. And then Here's she just kept asking me for all these different credit card numbers all the time and I'd give them to her, you know, Yeah, she's uh -huh. my girlfriend yeah. right. and then just disappeared. Yeah. And I'm like, maybe that was like not what I thought it was. But yeah. it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> I mean, I had a girlfriend, priest. <laughs> Otherwise, she was pretty good. <laughs> She's yeah. hot. Yeah, she right. was. Hot. She talked <laughs> dirty. <laughs> and maybe after like five years now of podcasting, we can work you out of that debt. But <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I did stupid. Is I just forgot to eat today. Just haven't oh. eaten. 
forgot. That happens. That happens yeah. sometimes. It's like next level dumb. Like I haven't it, eaten like, it's since just like lunch yesterday. It's like that's it's like that's the most neglecting human needs. one of the most primal <laughs> urges a human can experience. Yeah. Yeah. Well, me, I forgot that we had a meeting at two, and I was going to go get some food at like one thirty, and you text me and reminded me. Mm -hmm. So then after the meeting, I just forgot. What if Jeff just passes out mid-podcast? Yeah, I'm like, you know, that intro, let's just blame it on me not eating. I'll sometimes send texts to Jeff's, like, kind of disguised as, like, so this is what we want to talk about in this meeting. But it's not really to confirm about the agenda. It's just to kind of remind Jeff that there is a meeting (laughs) happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm glad I thought to send that one. Yeah, no, I yeah. totally forgot about that meeting. Do we want to talk about that meeting? Uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we're just working on a few more trips. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully they're not full by the time this comes out and people just <laughs> get teased even harder, but we'll see what happens. Mm. And I may or yeah. may not be coming on some of those trips. We'll see. If I have time, I definitely will. I want to. And hopefully we didn't get scammed because we're with a new contact now. They swapped us over so we could easily be getting scammed by this. Oh, yeah. Company, what if it's the person know? who got Wes? Yeah. They're replicating the number. <laughs> 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 They're just taking it from all our listeners now. It's not scamming yeah. us. <laughs> all right. Well, um, should we go ahead and get to this episode? Yeah, let's you do it. You guys got anything else you want to say? You got, are you going to get any revenge on this scammer uh it that kind of leads into my episode (laughs) but not really well um before we get into it though let's have a quick ad break tooth and claw is brought to you by beams dream powder have you guys been drinking your beam dream powder yet at all oh yeah 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 what do you think has that helped you sleep yeah, it has. It definitely helps me. Yeah. I was actually like in a real spate of insomnia when we got that and it made me sleep like a baby. Oh, wow. Babies don't sleep great. So that's a, not a good baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like babies are always waking up and waking up. Are you saying up. listeners who have babies who don't sleep well, they have bad so babies? You yes, just, that's what I'm saying. Wake up crying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess I used the wrong words. <laughs> well, for me, I've been able to sleep really well. And what I like is I don't wake up crying and I don't even wake up very tired, which most sleep medication makes me wake up tired. So I've really enjoyed it so far. And today, my listeners get a special discount. My listeners, not your guys. Just, just. On yes, sure. Beans <laughs> Dream Powder. Their best selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep. With no added sugar. Now available in delicious seasonal flavors like cinnamon, cocoa, sea salt caramel, and white chocolate peppermint. Better sleep has never tasted better. A recent clinical study revealed Dream to help 93% of users wake up feeling more refreshed. And 93% reported that Dream helped them get a more restful night's sleep. So Wes, you're in that seven percent. No, I I did it. I did. I'm in ninety. Slept like a baby. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to fifty percent off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com/tooth. Tooth is all caps. The discount is auto applied at checkout. No code necessary. That's shop b e a m dot com slash tooth for up to 50% off. All right, guys. So today we are going to be talking about an animal that we've already talked about. And I'm not going to tell you what that animal is just yet, but it's a good story. It's actually two stories. So I want to walk you through my thought process on this a little bit. (laughs) Actually, I'm about to spoil what animal it is. (laughs) I was trying really hard (laughs) to make that a secret, but it's not going to last long, but Uh, grizzly bear. It was an exciting 10 seconds. (laughs) (laughs) I was reading one of my favorite bear attack books, Mark of the Grizzly by Scott McMillan. Mm. Who's Mark? uh, It's not. It's (laughs) called Mark of the Grizzly. It's one of the first bear attack books I ever read. I remember like drawing the original cover because I liked the cover so much. It's just a great book. So I can't recommend it highly enough. And I was looking for a story that had a particular element to it. And we'll get to that later. And I found it. But the story that I found in there, I didn't really think was quite enough. And so then I was scanning through some of the other stories and I found another one that actually had the same element plus 
an extra element. So we're going to talk about a oh, lot wow. of bonus three element. elements. Right? Yeah, two el- two elements. We're going to oh, talk okay. about some interesting bear attack stuff today. Stuff that we actually get asked somewhat often by some people. So it's going to be a good episode. Yeah, um, I'm excited. I wish you both, had one more element, but I just have two elements. So <laughs> sorry. Uh, all right. So um, unless you have some element drink, element in drink, your cup. Yep. oh, Free ad plug for element. <laughs> which I do. Okay. Yum. Both of these attacks that we're going to talk about happened in 1995. Our first one was on May 15th, 1995. And Dan Bosia, I'm just going to, I'm not sure that's how you say his last name. So I'm just going to call him Dan this whole time. He was in Chugach State Park near Eagle River, Alaska on excursion to hike around and photograph some wildflowers, which seems like a pretty safe thing to do, right? Right. Well, it's not going to be a wildflower attack. It's going to be a bear attack. It was a beautiful <laughs> spring day in Chugach State Park, and the long Alaskan winter had finally given way to some greenery and to some warmer temperatures. The days are also starting to get really long, and to Dan, I'm guessing it probably seemed like the world's starting to come alive again. Like, for us, that often happens, like, in the United States, we start feeling that way in April. For Alaska, it's more like May when things start to green up a bit. So it's going to be this- May. Yeah, exactly. Um, Dan was a civil engineer for the Alaskan Native Tribal Health Consortium in Anchorage, and he worked in a lot of different isolated tribal villages where he would help design sewer and water systems. So kind of like our dad, Jeff, just he yeah, did it in just much cooler places and for people that actually need it. I don't know. Missoula's pretty cool. Yeah, Missoula They both is got really grizzly cool. bears. Yeah, that's true. Like a lot of Alaskans, Dan had a passion for the outdoors He was a tall redhead. He was a regular fixture on the mountain biking trails, cliffs, and ski runs in the Anchorage area. And he also spent a lot of time in the backcountry. But Mm. being outside that much and doing those kind of activities meant that Dan had his fair share of adventures. He had fallen from some really high cliffs while he was climbing. He'd been caught in intense winter storms and even avalanches while skiing. What? He fell off cliffs and was in avalanches? Yeah. It seems like he... (laughs) Maybe like from what I read clumsy? about him, <laughs> no, I think he just like really liked pushing the envelope. Like I guess he, I, you could say that about our cousin Brent. Yeah, kind of. Uh, <laughs> but he like, I, I, the book wasn't my only source. I went and read some articles too about this, both of the attacks we're going to talk about. And all of them described Dan as being like very adventure loving, very much like in the outdoor scene as much as he possibly could. And he even wrote an essay And he really seemed to be our kind of person because he talks about like one of the things he loved most about all these adventures was this risk of death. Uh, Or at least like, Mike, I don't know if you ever. Yeah, it sounds like like maybe you guys. (laughs) An adrenaline chaser. But um, he like these four, these activities that he did, like forced him to really test his abilities to extreme degree. And like having that risk of death made it all that much more enticing. Like when, when he knew there was something that could go wrong, it made it that much more enticing and that much more satisfying when he did what he wanted to do. So lucky for him, that May day in 1995, he's about to collect one of the most memorable experiences of his lifetime and one that's going to make him look at fear and adrenaline in a whole different light. Hmm. So Dan's out there hiking around. He's trying to take photos of wildflowers he just crossed some beaver dams, and he's between two branches of a small stream when he looks to his right and something in the tree catches his eye. There's a large brown shape moving through the dense trees, and his brain immediately identifies it as a moose about 60 feet away. That does make wildflower photography a little more dangerous, so he's probably having a good time now. Yeah, yeah. now he's like, <laughs> I gotta test my bored. abilities. Yeah. With the flowers? <laughs> I don't know, dude. So, flowers, if you... If you eat the wrong one, you could probably die. True. That's yeah. true. Roses yeah. have thorns sometimes. It's no joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So he's no stranger to moose. He's from Alaska. They're large ungulates. They're common even near downtown Anchorage. He knows they can be really defensive, especially this time of year when they might have a new calf that they're protecting. So he immediately begins making an exit plan, not wanting to draw any attention from this moose, which was way too close for comfort. But that's when he notices something strange. The moose's head was moving up and down really quickly, like not in the slow measured way that a browsing moose would be doing, where it's like grabbing plants and chewing and kind of doing the slow up and down. It's going much quicker. 
and mm. immediately his blood goes cold because he realizes he's not looking at a moose, but a very large grizzly bear. This bear is bending down and it's ripping chunks of flesh from a carcass. And Dan knew he was in trouble. You don't want to be by that. You sure don't. Dan knew he's in trouble and he really was. So I want to talk for a minute about why bears on carcasses is such a big deal and why it's such a big risk. So I dug into some literature for this. I even reached out to my professor, Tom Smith, who I did my master's with, and I read one of his like seminal papers. It's called Human Bear Conflict in Alaska, 1880 through 2015. He wrote that book with Stephen Herrero, who's the guy that wrote uh, Bear Attacks, Their Causes and Avoidances, which is considered like the Bible of bear attacks. Oh, you called him the godfather, right? He's the godfather of bear or whatever. I I like that title. Yeah. Yeah. In this paper, though, they look at over 600 incidents that all happen in Alaska. And while the majority of those incidents are from surprise encounters, bears defending carcasses are shown to be one of the most high probability circumstances that can lead to an attack. So really like Breaking down that data, surprise encounters where you just surprise a bear in any kind of circumstance are like by far the the biggest risk factor. But bears defending a carcass is like one of the top ones. So if you like Um, threw a surprise birthday party for a grizzly bear, it would just take you out. It's not going to like it. Depends (laughs) on how many people are there. Give them a jack in the box. They won't like that toy very much probably. (laughs) Probably So probably spoil it before they go in there. Just be like, hey, yeah. just so you know, this oh, is yeah. a surprise. Spoil the party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine, what if you gave him a jack-in-the-box for a birthday present at a surprise party? <laughs> what if, <laughs> what if you dead. did <laughs> throw <laughs> a surprise party for your friend and they just murdered like half <laughs> the people because they're, they're so I considered mad. it. <laughs> <laughs> they just have that predator trigger in their yep. brain and they just lose. <laughs> they're just like, yeah. I got to make a decision right now. <laughs> <laughs> fight or flight. <laughs> uh. All right. Well, anyway, back to carcasses. Like a bear defending a carcass is one of the most serious things that we dealt with in Yellowstone. When I was working in Yellowstone, it was like if we knew there was a carcass and we knew there was a good chance there was a bear on it, that was like the the like high risk scenario where we went in multiple people, multiple deterrents. Like we took that very very seriously because it's like such a high danger zone when you're Mm -hmm. working with a grizzly bear and bears are really territorial around carcasses because that protein and fat that they get from ungulates is really beneficial to them it's much more energetically efficient than food they they're going to get from foraging so when they get this meat meal they're going to do their best to defend it from other bears or other threats so female bears with cubs will go out of their way to avoid carcasses because being around a carcass is like such a danger zone for them that they could run into like a big dominant male that's going to kill the cubs. So even like even other bears that aren't strong enough are going to avoid these carcasses just because they are so risky. There's roughly 30,000 grizzly bears in Alaska. So there's really a lot. Like if you're walking around Alaska, you have a chance of running into a grizzly bear in most places in Alaska. Some of those yeah. bears are the big the big coastal ones that we see in like the fat bear contest. And then some of them are more inland bears, like you would find in Chugach State Park. Uh, Mike won our bet, by the way. We owe him some Yeah, Mike candy. won the fat That's bear. That's right. I know. Yeah. Hey, hey. Grazer. I, I, I think I she sent awesome. him $10, but I can't you remember. Did. Yeah, no, nice. I remember. What's the big difference, though, if you guys remember, between these coastal bears and, like, an inland bear? Salmon. Yeah. Salmon. I, like, ton of salmon. They get huge. They uh, have, like, a... Uh, yeah, I think I know what you're saying. So, like, the coastal bears, they are able to eat, like, a way bigger percentage of meat because they have these salmon runs and, like, these salmon are a lot easier to catch. So they get really big and that makes them less aggressive. Whereas, yeah. like, me, where I haven't eaten in over 24 hours, I'm pretty aggressive right now. And that's kind of how those inland bears get. Yeah, you're on the right line for sure. It's, you know, not just salmon, but everything in those coastal ecosystems, there's just like a higher percentage of food for those bears. So they are really well fed. And because of that, those ecosystems can support a lot more bears and they can support bears in higher densities. And the direct result of that, of the fact that there's like bears in higher densities, means they have to be closer to each other. 
and then they're not nearly as territorial or as a, aggressive because they don't really have to defend food or defend territory this, the way that other bears do. So because of that, I'm not saying like a coastal bear isn't one that you have to be cautious around, but they do tend to be a lot more lenient towards people than these inland bears because bears tend to treat us like they treat other bears. So Chugach like isn't far from the coast, but it's not necessarily on like a, a salmon stream that's like a really great kind of food source for these bears. So this is a bear that's going to act more like a bear in Montana or Wyoming, mm. right? right? Cranky. Yeah, a little bit crankier, like Jeff after not eating for a little bit. <laughs> Especially right. to like imagine if you got me like a burrito or something right now. Mm -hmm. And then I started eating it and you took it or like I thought someone might come take it. Then I'd be totally aggravated. Probably kill him. Yeah. All right. This episode is brought to you by Miracle Made. Did you know that traditional bed sheets can harbor more bacteria than a toilet seat? Yeah. So just imagine like you knew that. Well, we said it last episode. Yeah. <laughs> For the purpose of this exercise, pretend you didn't know that. So okay. envision instead of your bed sheets, you just have a bunch of toilet seats that you're sleeping on. You like that? <laughs> no. No. Yeah, I don't think you I wouldn't think you would. Miracle Made offers a whole sleep line like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Nestled in one of the little toilet holes. So Miracle Made offers a whole line of self-cleaning, eco-friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Wow. Wow. Using silver-infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermoregulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get a better sleep every single night. Wes, it sounds like you need both Dream and Miracle. I know, like this is built for me to sleep better. (laughs) Miracle sheets are also luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than bed sheets used by some five-star hotels. Probably nicer than, I bet you these sheets feel better than the sheets the King of England uses. He probably, yeah, he probably sleeps in like velvet that's made from like orangutan (laughs) <laughs> under guard hair. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, single use orangutan <laughs> sheets. So stop sleeping on bacteria. Bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne. Sleep clean with Miracle. Go to trymiracle.com slash tooth to try Miracle made sheets today. And whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40%. And if you use our promo tooth at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Three towels. What are you even going to do with that many towels, Jeff? <laughs> one for I'll each limb. just throw two of them away and keep one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe fold one into like one of those footballs that you play on the tabletop. <laughs> Miracle is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash tooth and use the code TOOTH to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash tooth to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made, for sponsoring this episode. All right, so when Dan realizes that he's looking at a grizzly bear that's feeding on a carcass 60 feet away, his heart starts racing, and he knows that he has to get out of the area as quickly as possible. So he knows that he's already within a distance that the bear's not going to be happy with, so he decides to back away really slowly and without making any noise in the process. And he's doing pretty good until he gets three steps in, so actually not very not, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost immediately bad, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> and on the fourth step, on the fourth step, he bumps his stiff... Unless he's <laughs> taking like 10 minutes for each step. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. The fourth step, he or stepped on like, one of those squeaky dock toys. <laughs> or if each of his steps are like 100 feet long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he is tall. He did say that. All right. So on his fourth step, he bumps his stiff new boots against a stump, and it makes a loud noise, loud enough to alert the bear that Dan was there. Ugh. The bear raises its head and then stands on both legs to get a better view of Dan, and then immediately growls, drops to its feet, and charges at full speed. So Dan only has a split second to react. In a split second, he feels a kind of fear that he had never felt before. 
He says it was like a helpless, out of control kind of fear that didn't give him the typical rush that he would get, like, or make him feel alive. It just made him feel absolutely terrified. That's surprising, yeah. so, given that he's like fallen off of cliffs. That's what I was going to say. Like, I was going like, to say, like, <laughs> normally that makes sense, but he's like falling off cliffs and being in avalanches. But he felt yeah. in control when he was just <laughs> free falling off a cliff, I'm sure. <laughs> that's what he said. Yeah. Uh, no, I believe no, him. That's yeah. It is another entirely different situation, I'm sure. It'd be scary. So when the, for sure. When the bear's about 30 feet away, Dan knows that it's not going to be a bluff charge. He lays down in a small grove of birch trees and plays dead. And the bear runs right past him. And then he wow. said it started swatting the ground and bouncing and doing what he described as like a little dance. <laughs> and during this, Dan calmly said several times, no bear, no bear. And then he looked up and made eye contact with the bear. So just really quickly, like this is pretty classic, like a grizzly bear when they're really upset and maybe haven't figured out if they do want to attack you yet, they're going to do a display like this. Like this is part of kind of a bluff charge for a grizzly. And I would, I personally would qualify that as a bluff charge. And then when he decides to finally like talk quietly and then look up at the bear, it decides to actually engage. So mm. the bear had had enough. So it's it kind of like the in. hockey, what's it called? That New Z- or that Tonga does before they like play oh, a hockey haka. match? Haka? Yeah, it's like they yeah. do the haka before they... That's kinda. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bear looks up, it charges, Dan puts his face on the ground, and he just waits for what he knows is coming. And the bear starts by striking out with a massive pot, hits Dan in the ribs, and he says it felt like getting hit by something absolutely massive, like a sledgehammer. Like a truck? This, nah, not a truck. He didn't say <laughs> truck. The big swat from the bear sends him skidding across some exposed roots. And then the wow. bear jumps on his back and pushes him down with its nose. And then it latches its huge jaws around the meat of his back and tears off a large piece of flesh. And Dan gets to have this really singular sensation of feeling muscle and flesh being torn away from his body. Oh my God. It's just God, not man. something that many people get to feel. No. Uh, the bear then jumps over his body and it runs up the trail a short distance, starts swatting the ground and doing the little dance again. And then it growls and starts woofing and grunting. And he looks up again to see what it's doing. And so it charges him again. And so I have a question. This one's not a joke anymore, but yeah. Uh, so, like, you said that they treat us like they treat other bears, right? hmm So, like, I guess what I'm asking is, like, for another bear, it wouldn't have gotten that injured in this circumstance, and it could have ran yeah. away after that attack. So maybe the bear's like, why hasn't it run away yet? I'm going to attack again? Probably. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, that's possible, but what I guess, like, when I say they treat us like they treat other bears... They don't actually see us as other bears, but they don't like necessarily have an evolved response for humans. So they kind of just like default to the other response that they have, their most common response, which is another bear. So yeah. like that's kind of why they treat us that way. And yeah, maybe like the bear yeah, was I'm like, just I wondering, taught- like, why didn't you run away yet? And now I need to attack you again type exactly. of thing, you know? I, well, no, I think more what it more what it probably was was the bear was like, I neutralized this threat, you know, mm-hmm. right. he like stops struggling and then it runs away and then he starts to move again. It's like, OK, maybe I didn't. Uh, you know, maybe I, I need to go in and hit it again. Is that a so, thing for bears when they m- make eye contact with each other? It kind of triggers something inside of them. Is that not uh, necessarily? I don't, know I don't think that. it's so much the eye contact is just like movement and kind okay. of. Personally, I like, I think there's something to eye contact, but as far as I know, there's no research That's to like support a big that it will trigger a, an attack. Yeah. So he has this like sinking depressive feeling on the second charge, and he thinks for sure that this time the bear is going to finish the job and kill him. And when it makes contact with him, it runs its claws down his side. It rips through his clothes, but it really doesn't do too much damage to his body. But then the bear bites into his left thigh, Hmm. starts shaking him back and forth on the ground, and then drops the leg and bites into the other one. But it doesn't shake this time, it just bites down. And then just like that, the bear stops, it jumps over him again, and tears away into the brush. So he's lying there for a minute, wondering if he had been too injured to stand up. But then he hops up and immediately just begins running the opposite direction for about 200 yards. Yeah, and... (laughs) 
he was pretty Michael shocked Johnson he, probably just setting a new yeah. world record for the 200 yard yeah. dash. He was shocked that he was able to do it, but then he starts feeling really lightheaded and hyperventilating. So he calms down and walks the last mile to the visitor center parking lot. And he's babbling to himself the entire way. And the things he's saying to himself is, Oh, I'm lucky. Oh, I'm lucky. Oh, he messed me up. Oh, he messed me up. Mm. And he's just saying those two phrases over and over and over again. And he's also just terrified. He says like every bush, every tree he sees feels like there's a bear behind it. Yeah. And he keeps thinking about his truck as if like it's a refuge. Like as soon as he can get to his truck and touch his truck, he'll be safe because he'll know he knows he can get away and he can be safe in this little like sanctuary. So that's what he's focusing on. And when he gets to the parking lot, he scrambles up a shortcut. He gets to the pavement and there's a couple in their thirties that are watching and they just like look at him and then walk away, which is kind of a dick move. That's insane. Uh, what? Yeah. Cause his <laughs> clothes are like tattered and he's like just bleeding everywhere and stuff. And then someone else approaches him and they offer him a ride to the hospital in Anchorage, but wow. he declines and he says he'll drive himself because he still just like wanted to get into his truck, which he still huh. saw as like this safe place. I can kind of understand it, that. Yeah. It's kind of like in a horror movie where you're just like, you just need to get out of there. Like, don't talk to anyone. Yeah. Just like go. Right. But when he finally does get to his truck, this fear and adrenaline that was keeping the pain at bay kind of quits. And he just completely stiffens. His entire body stiffens because the pain just shoots and radiates through his body. And he ends up saying like, you know what? <laughs> I will take that ride after all. Yeah. Um, oh, so they're call. still so, like with him. Yeah. Okay. So they get him into the hospital. Luckily, his wounds really weren't that bad considering he got attacked by a grizzly bear. He had to pack the hole in his back with some gauze for a few weeks, and his leg was in pain for a long time, but he made a complete 100% recovery. Oh, um, good. He did have like some long-term repercussions, didn't like spending time alone in the woods for a long time, was always pretty nervous. Um but since then, like he carries bear spray, he still lives it up. He's still doing all this stuff. He and he also kind of sees this as one of the better experiences of his life because it was like one that like no one can really have. You know, it's just like sure. a singular it's experience. Like, yeah. He's got a good the story ultimate, now. Yeah, yeah, like a thrill seeker, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After being interviewed by rangers, they decided not to pursue the bear because it wasn't acting abnormally. It was defending a carcass. And Dan was really happy about that. He didn't think the bear was at fault. So sure. Good. But just a month and a half later on July 1st, three other people would be attacked in Chugach state park and they no. would be nearly as fortunate as Dan. They should have oh. got that dang bear, I guess. Actually, I'm glad they didn't still. I'm pro. I don't bear. think it's the same bear, but we'll get, uh, to that. what do you think the truck or like car ride is like after like the first five minutes? Because, like, he he tells him the story, like, oh, this bear just yeah. bit me. It, like, yeah. bit my back. I had to, like, run away. And then, like, after, right. like, it goes quiet, <laughs> is he just like, so. What do you do for this work? Weather's, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this weather's been pretty nice yeah. today, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's a very good question. <laughs> Tooth and Claw is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. You guys have heard me talk about it before. I've had people DM me telling me that they've saved a couple of million dollars or something like that. And wow. I know I <laughs> saved a, a million dollars. No, but people have told me like that they've saved a lot of money with it. And like pretty much everyone who signs up for it has some type of subscription they don't know about, whether it be... An animal attack podcast subscription or something like that. And Don't get out of that. <laughs> Rocket Money makes it really easy to cancel. And then you can use that money to subscribe to your favorite podcast subscription. And the other thing it does is it creates a really nice, easy, clear way to see your budget and help you budget and help you financially after you've canceled these subscriptions. So, with over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year. So, we're really bringing that up. <laughs> and $1 billion in total savings so far. 
Stop wow. wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash claw. That's rocketmoney.com slash claw. Claw is all caps. Rocketmoney.com slash claw. All right. So let's get into our second story. So Marcy Trent was a 77-year-old Alaskan. She was very Alaskan. At 77, she was still setting records for long-distance running in her age class. She's very well-known in the Alaskan running community around Anchorage. And the white-haired, five-foot-tall woman had spent 45 years in Alaska. So she's no stranger to the trails, the paths, the mountains around the area. Her 45-year-old son, Larry, was also a runner, as well as a popular musician and music teacher. He was so good at saxophone that he played at the governor's inaugural ball, which... I guess is, like that means you're pretty good at saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do that, Wes? No, I played saxophone for a little bit, but I don't really know what the benchmarks are for being good at it. So <laughs> He never played yeah. at the governor's ball? No, never played at the governor's ball. Any kind of ball? Never were you played like, at a ball. Were you like Shoot. the next in line? Like if the one guy called in sick, they'd call you? No. When I quit, I was like 14 or 15, <laughs> so I don't think I was ever very good. Um, all right. So on July 1st at 10.30 in the morning, 14-year-old Art Abel was lying in bed when his phone rang. His uncle Larry and Grandma Marcy, the two people we just talked about, wanted him to go on a run with them at McHugh Creek Trailhead in Chugach State Park. He got his stuff together, and not long after, Uncle Larry and Grandma Marcy picked him up, and they drove to the beautiful woody area near McHugh Creek. As they walked to the trailhead, they joked about what to do if they see a moose, climb a tree, or a bear run which isn't what you're supposed to do we know that the trio started running when they got and when they got to this really beautiful part of the trail that breaks out of the woods and gives you this really beautiful like gorgeous 360 degree view of the different mountain ranges and the turn again arm marcy and art you yeah. can't survive in that kind of weather wait what do you mean Three, oh, 360, 360 degree <laughs> <laughs> all right Uh, Marcy and Art at this point decided to stop and admire the view. So the grandma and the Uh, 14-year-old. While Larry decides to run ahead, and this is a decision that's going to cost two of them their lives. Mm. So really quickly. They ran away from the bear but then stopped to look at a view? They were just on a run. They were talking about what to do if they see a bear. I see. Yeah, Yeah. but a bear bear spray was still around. And like to their... Like, a lot of people give the wrong information. So, like, I'm totally. sure they thought they knew, you know? Not their yeah. fault is what I'm saying. Okay. So, a little bit about grizzlies and trail running. So, there's a few things that are really high risk about trail running. And one of the main things is that it puts you out of their flight distance and within their fight distance really quickly. So, mm. bears, we talked about this. A lot of animals, they have this distance where if they detect a threat, it's just a lot easier to run away. And for some animals, like that's always going to be their response is to run away, even if you're really close. But with bears, especially grizzly bears, sometimes when you're way too close, when they determine that you're a threat, they decide to fight rather than flight. And there's actually papers that look at what that distance is. But um, when you're trail running, you can put yourself within that fight distance a lot quicker without the bear realizing you're there. Runners often aren't making too much noise, and the sound of their footfalls, breaths, and heartbeats will sometimes drown out the noises of their surroundings. And sometimes runners also run with headphones, which also makes them a little bit less aware of what's going on around them. They often look at the ground in front of them. Like when you're running, you kind of are looking at the trail ahead of you, especially trail runners. So they don't always survey their surroundings the same way that someone who's hiking or, you know, maybe just kind of like spending a leisurely time out in the woods might be doing. And then There's finally, someone I know listening right now, trail running with headphones, who's yeah. just terrified. <laughs> it's probably my brother. Yeah. He, he does it a lot. <laughs> oh, man. He had a run oh, in with a bear. Probably, I think I told that story. He's in actually. grizzly co- country, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was about to say he's probably not in grizzly country, but he is. Yeah. He's yeah. in Bozeman. Bozeman. Also, that fast moving motion can also trigger a predatory attack, which we've talked about. Sometimes a bear sees you coming and is like, oh, I wonder if this is prey. And then you run by and it's like, oh, that's moving like prey moves. So it is a really high risk activity. It's actually one of the highest risk activity. Like if you, 
it, it, there's some bear biologists out there that think it's worse than hunting, that it's worse mm. than even like wildlife photography, that it, it's very high risk. Um, like what's number one, just like bear wrestling? It depends on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bear hunting, like bear <laughs> bow hunting. Yeah. Uh, bear surprise It depends parties. on who you ask. But yeah. this is a really high risk activity. <laughs> All right. Um, so Marcy and Art watch Larry disappear. He runs out in front of them, the uncle, the grandma and the grandson are together. And Marcy turns to her grandson and she says, I really hope we don't see a bear. And Art oh, assures no. her that they won't. So the two start running again and a little bit up the trail, Art's stomach starts hurting a bit. So they slow down and Marcy slows down to match his pace. And up ahead and out of sight, Larry was being attacked by a grizzly bear. The bear had been feeding on a moose carcass, and it was likely surprised by Larry approaching quickly and decided to attack rather than flee. And these thick alders around the trail, like there's a lot of brush around the trail, probably hid the bear until it was really close to Larry. And when his body was found, he was about 30 yards below the trail. His pelvis and rib cage were completely crushed in, and he had deep oh. lacerations all throughout his body. The coroner ultimately ruled that he probably died of blood loss. No one was around when Larry died. Well, I shouldn't say that. No one was around when Larry got attacked, so it's impossible to know exactly what happened. All right, while Larry was bleeding out 30 yards away, Art and Marcy were approaching, and Art looked up to see the bushes 20 feet in front of him moving and something big and brown crashing through the dense brush. His first thought was that it was a moose, and he immediately dives across the trail and into some underbrush. So he has the same reaction that Dan has, that it's probably a moose, and that he just needs to, like, dive into the underbrush. If you saw a bush moving, you probably would have thought it was, like, an ant, like a mini ant, right? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point. (laughs) All right, so his first thought was moose. He immediately dives across the trail and in some underbrush, and then he hears his grandma screaming, and the screaming abruptly stops. The bear had grabbed the tiny 100-pound woman by the neck and head and had shaken her so hard that her neck and spinal cord snapped, killing her pretty much instantly. The bear then stashes her tiny body in some alders 20 feet off the trail. So Art had slid face first down a small hill into a ravine in this creek bed, and when he stopped, he didn't know if this moose was still chasing him because he still thinks it's a moose or if it had charged his grandma. So he calls out to her and he doesn't get an answer. But the bushes start moving again, and he fears that this moose is coming after him. So he runs away, and once he's a good distance away, he climbs a tree, and he hopes his uncle would come find him and that his grandma's going to be okay. About an hour later, a hiker passes him. So he's been in this tree for an hour now, and talks to him from the tree and tells him that he talks to this hiker, and he tells him a moose attacked his grandma. So the hiker goes out on the trail, looks around for signs of his grandma, and then hears someone moaning from a little ways away, and it's Larry. The hiker runs up to him, and Larry moans one word. He says, bear. So the hiker, his name's Jim Blees. He knew he couldn't do so much for Larry because he just sees Larry's in terrible shape. So he runs down the trail, and he meets a group of five hikers. They run back to Larry, and Jim keeps going down the trail to look for more help at the trailhead. And when the five hikers find this completely torn up man, Larry, he's breathing shallowy, shallowy, (laughs) shallowy, And not responding. I don't know if you so, ever got it there. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Shallowly. Um, so he's still alive. He was the guy that yeah. got his his rib cage was crushed in and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so man. he's still alive when they get to him, but his breasts are starting to be really shallow. And uh, one but of the you women said that, that he didn't tell him what happened. He told the other guy a bear. So <laughs> he said bear. Um, yeah. He okay. described it. Yeah. I, you're you're right. How would you Fair interpret enough. that, Jeff? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. I just, just, I was just messing with him. He was just goofing. Just goofing. So one of the women that showed up starts praying, and not long after, Larry takes his last breath. So Jim had found help at the trailhead, and a helicopter is already on the way. There wasn't a really good landing spot, so the rescuers rappel down from the helicopter. Not long after, they find Art still in the tree, and they coax him down. He's still in the He'd tree. Been I'd He'd be been in, in the tree. tree. Been in the tree for three hours, thinking wow. that like a, a moose had attacked his grandma. They didn't come um, and tell him like what happened. No, like no one came and got him because Jim, the guy, the only guy that knew he was there, 
Jim had like ran for help. Yeah. Uh, I see. Wow. So they find Larry's body right away and Marcy's body not long after. They also find a fresh moose carcass with obvious signs of bear feeding. So Art gets a helicopter ride back to the trailhead. Along the way, he pieces together some information, just like overhearing the captain of the helicopter or the pilot of the helicopter talking. And he realizes that his grandma and uncle were dead and that they've been killed by a bear. Man, that'd be a rough way to kind of come to your own conclusion that your no. family had died. Just kind of you had to piece it together like that for yourself. That's Super awful. Rough. Then a police chaplain arrives. Uh, Larry's wife gets there. Marcy's husband gets there. And the chaplain delivers this bad news to them as well. So it takes a few weeks before Art does any interviews to tell his side of the story. And the whole running community and this whole family is really shocked by the attack. And the family really wants a bear killed. Like they say to Alaska Fish and Game, like, we want this bear dead. And they try to catch the bear but they don't succeed and enough time passes to where they're not confident at all. They're going to get the right bear. And so they give up and this kind of pisses this family off and they want revenge. Like they want this bear dead. So they actually like even threaten legal action to do it. And one of the family members is like, should there even be bears in Chugach national or Chugach state park? It kind of turns into this big thing that dominates some of the Anchorage headlines for a while. Mm. And, you know, like to lose two family members like that has to just be so horrific and painful. It's hard to even imagine. At the same time, you know, this is a place where grizzlies have existed long before we existed there. So like they do we belong on the landscape. In Alaska. Turf. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah. if we want to first push them out of our cities and then also like not allow them to be in natural areas, like where do they go? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's it for the two stories. The Boats, linking probably. factor, <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the linking factor to these stories, obviously, is that there's a carcass in both of them. And then the second one, the second element that I talked about was trail running. All right. So let's do our ouchies. So we'll do Dan's story first and then the second story. Yeah. Um, I'll go first. I'll give Dan six ouchies. Like, I do think it sucks that he like never was able to enjoy the woods quite the same way. It sucks to like have to pack gauze into an open wound for weeks. That made me cringe mm. when you said that. Ugh. Yeah. That but muscle leaving was the it, one that got me. Yeah, but as far That's as a grizzly <laughs> bear attack, it's pretty mild. So I'm giving him six. And then the two others, I'll give both of them eights. Because it's like you're getting killed by a grizzly bear. So it's like a high, obviously like really bad. But both of them were very, I think, it, it, they weren't fortunate in any way, but, like, they at least died quickly. So that's what yeah. I'm going with. I sure. think I'll bump, what was the first guy's name, Dan? Uh, Dan, yeah. I'll bump him to a five for me because he ran, he got in a truck, and, like, he says it's, like, his favorite thing that ever happened to him. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it couldn't <laughs> have been too terrible. And then... The other two, I, I like the eight. That's that's a bad one. It's very yeah. bad. Totally. Dan's whole it's life kind of... for their family. Yeah. Dan's whole life kind of sounds like one big ouchie to me. So <laughs> on like a relative sliding scale kind of thing, um, I think I'm going to go with a five for him. For Marcy, I'm going seven because it was almost immediate if what that's you quick. said, if what you're, we're speculating mm-hmm. is true. And then an eight for Larry, since he kind of had to lay there with a broken rib cage for what seems like at least a while. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't quite as instant. Okay. I might go nine, actually. Nine for Larry. When you're struggling for breath, that's just never a good feeling. Yeah. That's true. I totally agree with you. Tooth and Claw is brought to you by AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I like drinking AG1. I gave it a try because for me, it's really hard for me to get all the nutrients that I want out of my like everyday meals. It's not a meal replacement, but it can like really help add to everything that you're eating and drinking. And for me, that's like exactly what I need. I feel like I eat a fairly balanced meal, but I just like having that extra boost. And AG1 really does that for me. Uh, It helps me have more energy. It makes me feel like just happier, like I have like healthier gut better immune system. I just feel like when I'm drinking it, I feel all together 
a lot better. Does it help um, your bench numbers? It doesn't help me put up more weight when I'm benching. I don't think. Mm-hmm. Maybe it does. Who knows? It's been a while since I bench pressed. Okay, so it is a foundational nutritional supplement. It delivers comprehensive nutrients to support whole body health. And if you want to take ownership of your health, you can try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com tooth. That's drinkag1.com tooth to get that special author offer. Or that offer. vitamin D's clutch <laughs> now that it's winter again. Not as much sun. Yeah, you need to get that vitamin D. Gotta get vitamin that D. D's nuts. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to our categories. Okay, so we've done Grizzlies, obviously, multiple times. So instead of doing our favorite Grizzly, we're going to do our favorite revenge movie because mm. that family really wanted revenge on that pair. So I will go first, if you guys don't mind. Are you guys I all right with that? prefer it. So for me, like, the, the main thing about a good revenge movie is that the villain has to be someone I really want to see get their comeuppance. So like my first knee jerk was to pick Kill Bill because Mm -hmm. I just think it's a great movie, but I actually kind of like all the villains in that movie. Like I don't necessarily dislike them. So I decided to go with Django Unchained, another Tarantino movie. He does great. No one deserves revenge more than like the (laughs) African-American slaves. Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, they deserve to get their revenge. Um, and yeah, so I people <laughs> gathered. I think people know. Yeah, I'm yeah, they there. did. Yeah. But for the one percent out there that <laughs> yeah. needed a little extra help. Um. Anyway, it's just like it's so satisfying That'd to be see a crazy stance to be a like really <laughs> bad take. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's so satisfying to see like these people playing slave owners and KKK members and everything get killed in the way that only Tarantino can really do. So that's that's the movie I picked. I picked Django. Um, yeah, you go, Mike, because I'm okay. just gonna list a ton. <laughs> I so <laughs> so I need to explain just very quickly a couple qualifiers for my two picks. So my first is Princess Bride, but it's more the subplot of Inigo Montoya tracking down the six fingered man. Um, okay. I just I love that movie, and I think that's the fight scene at the end when he finally gets him is just amazing. And uh, it's got like the best revenge line, I feel like. Like, yeah, well, he practices killed- it through the whole movie. Yeah, my name is Inigo <laughs> Montoya. Yeah, uh, my second Let's pick is Old Boy. Clip. Play that clip right here. <laughs> Hello, my name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Stop saying that. I will play that clip right there. My second pick is Old Boy. And this one's a little weird, too, because it's actually the bad guy of the movie who is getting revenge on the protagonist of the movie. Um, But that doesn't make it any less crazy and awesome and amazing. It's twisty turvy. Great movie for family film night. Throw that one on. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, uh, it's funny you asked us this because me and Mike were honestly just talking about this. And I told him, I think... Revenge movie is like my number one favorite, re- like genre. Is it a genre? Oh, yeah, genre. yeah, sure. Yeah, like subgenre or genre. Yeah. Like, when so I was right, looking at my letterbox so and like my top forty, I have like twelve of them in there <laughs> because I listed <laughs> okay. my top hundred movies. Um, but in my top twenty, I had what you said. I had Django as my top, and then Count of Monte Cristo is an all timer for me. And that's just like a story purely for revenge. Like that's all that mm-hmm. matters in that story, especially the book. But like, it's such a good story where he just gets totally screwed over by the people closest to him. And then he becomes like the richest person in the world. And it's just like, yeah. okay, I have all these resources. Let's see what I can do. Yeah. Uh, Kill Bill was also there. John Wick is like a really good one that I want to yeah, shout you out. Yeah, got to include Sic- that. Sicario is like a kind of unexpected one where it's like, oh, I didn't know this was going to be a revenge movie, but it is. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. We were debating Lion King, Wes. Do you think that's a yeah, revenge movie? No. 
I don't think so. I didn't think so really either. But there's definitely elements. Jeff was close to swaying me. Like Scar, like the whole thing is like him, his Scar kills his dad and then it's like he goes back to fight Scar. Yeah, but it's more like he goes back to like reclaim his birthright, not so much to fight Scar. Yeah. Yeah. And like I also was wondering about The Departed. Yeah, I don't think so. I wouldn't call it a revenge movie. Yeah. You're stretching. But yeah, yeah. I... I, I'm not I one to talk since yeah, I scratched the that's why I didn't. Bit. That's why I didn't bring them up. But oh, and one other one I <laughs> you want did, to shout out is but, yeah. Well, you brought it up. <laughs> I did. Fair enough. Oh, you got me. The reverse uh, Uno reverse card. <laughs> oh, oh, I got it. I got to shout out Braveheart. Braveheart's like they slit his wife's throat and he just goes and starts a yeah, whole he's like, war. <laughs> I'm gonna topple your country because you killed <laughs> yeah. my wife. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and I'll shout Gladiator too. Is a great okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could keep going. But those are my right. like favorites. Okay. All right. Well, this episode's coming out right before Thanksgiving. So I wanted to ask you both something you're grateful for. Revenge movies. Uh, no, right. I'll come up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for gays. <laughs> right. I just, I think they get a hard time and I think they've done a great job of just showing our culture the like be, do what makes you happy and i just really respect gays a lot and i'm thankful that they exist and that they like live the life they want to live all right i don't know if you can call them gays but <laughs> what would you say uh, uh, like homosexual people lgbt lgbtq I mean, they're fine being called gays all right i don't think so well <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> we'll see in the comment section. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Who thinks what? I can yeah. tell already that we won't. No, I think we can probably keep that in. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm thankful for air travel because I just I feel so lucky right now to be traveling and uh, be able to see like parts of the world that back well, in that's the day, a good like, one. People would have to travel for like months and get like diphtheria and chlamydia to like go see a place you know yeah so that's the thing i'm like least sympathetic for is people who complain about their flights yeah i'm grateful for people who make youtube tutorials especially for like complicated tech oh yeah stuff that's a great one uh, for free that you can just watch and learn fix your really whatever you want (laughs) seriously i'm grateful for those people and like the most helpful ones it's always like some 10 year old kid doing like text to speech with like blaring music over it, but it's so helpful. Keep doing it. Put on your there's terrible a, music over the video. I'm happy to listen to it for five minutes. There's like a funny 60 uh, year old Weber State in Ogden, Utah professor who just does like little four minute YouTube videos of how to make meals under $5. And he makes all these different like <laughs> meals it's in the so microwave. Awesome. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, those are like insanely helpful. And there's one for everything, which there I love. really is now. All right. Um, we're going to go into what would Mike and Jeff do? So let's say you're Dan and you are, you like lay down and this bear starts doing a little dance. What are you going to mm. do? Oh, it'd be so hard not to watch. But that seemed to be his undoing, you know, when he looked at that bear. Oh I think his biggest mistake was kicking the stump. Okay. So feel free to riff on it. Do whatever you want. I'm just going to walk a lot quieter, you know? All right. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> if the bear starts doing a dance, I think you got to do a dance off, right? Okay. So you're dancing off with the bear? Yeah. If it starts dancing, I'm dancing back. I'll do the worm. That's my answer. Okay. You're doing the worm. Mike, mm. what are you doing? Do the worm so you kind of like leave the scene as you're doing the worm, like, <laughs> like gaining slowly distance. slowly back away while yeah. I do the worm. <laughs> That's a good yeah. idea. Uh, like for that. me, I'm keeping my face down on the ground, but I'm pulling out like my phone just very inconspicuously and in recording the dance. So I like I can watch it later because it seemed like the movement that he made with his head is what triggered both of those confrontate like dangerous violent confrontations with the bear. So well, that can be your answer for the next category too, the Instagram moment. I saw you had that. Oh, that's true. Us. I forgot we were doing that <laughs> one. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. So what you actually should do, uh first and foremost, you want to carry a deterrent. 
So bear spray existed in 95. All of these people in these stories should have been carrying some kind of deterrent in grizzly country, Uh, especially if you're doing high risk things like photography or trail running where you're not necessarily paying like total attention to all of your surroundings. If you are out and you are unlucky enough to surprise a bear on a carcass, if you see the bear before it sees you, you want to get out of the area as quietly as possible. So I actually talked to Tom about this and kind of what he thought, and we both agree that this is a scenario where uh, letting the bear know you're there isn't good. Like often that's what you're supposed to do. This isn't one of those. Like you want to get out of there without the bear seeing you because if it sees you, it might react aggressively to protect that carcass. So you want to get your, t- your deterrent ready and back out of the area as quietly and as quickly as possible. Because Dan Which is didn't what he have tried. A, he didn't have deterrent, but he did try right. to back out quietly. Right. Yeah. And the bear noticed, and when it attacked him, because he didn't have a deterrent, he did what was probably the next best thing, which was lay down and play dead. Uh, the bear still mauled him a little bit, but he got out of this pretty well, considering what could have happened. Yeah. Um, with the runners, the number one thing they should have done differently is stuck together. And... Again, like this is just a tragic like circumstance. You'd never expect this sort of thing to happen to you. But a group of them would have been much more intimidating to the bear, likely would have scared it off the carcass rather than making it attack them. Um, they should have had a deterrent also, but I do want to like point out that there's really not much that Art could have done to like stop his grandma from being killed. Like, yeah, he jumped away and like got away from this whole situation. But it was so quick and so brutal that, like, it doesn't really matter in this situation. You know, he couldn't have stopped it. Yeah. You cited deterrence, which always bring deterrence. Unless he had a deterrent. Especially trail running and grizzly country. Yeah. You've cited some statistic or some kind of information before. It was something to the effect of groups of three people have never really had a fatal bear encounter or something like that, right? Yeah, it's not never, but it's like very, very, very slim chances once you're three or more. Um, yeah. In Yellowstone, I think it maybe is never, but it, like in all of Grizzly Bear range, it's not never. All right, we're going to move on to our next category, and it is an Instagram photo you'd like to have, and you can do it from either story, but just be sure to be sensitive because there's definitely still surviving members of our second story. No, I'll do um, the first story too with Dan. And I'm going to do okay. what Mike said, the dance, but I want to like start the video on my face when I'm laying there and be like, so I was hiking in the woods and this moose came up and just started dancing and then I'll pan up to the bear and it'd be pretty funny. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> would be funny. Um, I want one final picture of the three of the runners together on the trail. Yeah. Like just that. one last Seriously. sentimental photo. Yeah. I think that'd be nice. I would want a picture of the dudes rappelling out of the helicopter because that sounds Ooh, pretty sweet. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Oh, what about Dan falling off of a cliff? I, I kind of want some pictures of that. <laughs> yeah, I do too, just to know what that meant even. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Jeff, let's do your animal fact of the episode. All right. Um, you guys ready for this one? I think it might... I think it might turn into another episode, honestly, uh, like okay. another Patreon episode. So, Airbud's owner froze his sperm. Airbuds? Okay. The, but the golden retriever Airbud, the owner, like Smart. had his sperm frozen for that dog. Okay, that's great. <laughs> that's the fact. All right, yeah. great. <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, we're Mike and Jeff paying attention so we're gonna do four questions i know Uh, one name what bet do you guys want to do billion besides a billion dollars what real (laughs) bet do you want to do how about loser has to tell the winner four things they're grateful about the winner in a text stupid sure all right i can do that i can come up with four that's not that many who wants the first question? I always pick. Yeah, I want you to pick this time, Jeff. Yeah, I'll go first. Okay. Roughly how many grizzlies live in Alaska? 30,000. Correct. Mike, what was Dan doing in Chugach the day he was attacked specifically? Um, wildflower photography. Correct. 
one one. Jeff, how much did Marcy weigh? Eighty pounds. Incorrect. Mike, would you like to steal? One hundred pounds. Correct. Two to one. Mike, what instrument did Larry play? Oh, <laughs> the sax. He was so good at it. At the mayor's <laughs> ball. Hey, Mike, what weight did Wes wrestle at in high school? <laughs> oh, 40, year, 45. Year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think it's 100 pounds, right? No, my freshman year, I was 98 pounds. <laughs> uh, good grief. Jeff, name three reasons trail running is especially dangerous in Grizzly Three country. reasons? Uh, mm-hmm. Because you get into their zone easier of like if they're going to decide to attack you great a lot of times they wear headphones which makes it so they pay less attention listening to tooth and claw and um they don't make a lot of noise because they're normally by themselves that should count as a that's a three-pointer that's steph curry right there (laughs) (laughs) all right two to three that's impressive I mean, Your there's question. not a billion dollars on the line, so no one cares. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how old was How old was Larry, Mike? Oh, shoot, Larry, Larry, fifty five. He's googling 55. it. He googled. I'm it. not. I just said fifty five. <laughs> Jeff, would you like to steal? Uh, fifty. What is it? Price is right. Rules fifty six. Incorrect. He was forty five. All right. Oh. Still, th- it's three to two, Jeff. What is the name of the book that these stories are published in? Attack of the Grizzly. Incorrect. Mike, do you remember? Mark of the Bear. Who is Mark, Wes? Mark of the Grizzly. Mark Mark Wahlberg? (laughs) All right. Wait, do I get a point for that? No, No, you said Mark of the Bear. Oh, what? That's so close, Wes. Okay. (laughs) That's fine. Mike, what was the first name of the hiker that found art? Oh, it was a B something. Babby? Incorrect. <laughs> Jeff, do you want to steal? Babby? <laughs> <laughs> hey there, Bab. I, I thought Joe was the first thing. Oh, very close. It was Jim. Mm, Jim. All right. Wow, I was way For off. All, so, Mike, you win unless... <laughs> That's unless, crazy. Babby was way off. <laughs> unless, and you lose, <laughs> Jeff, you lose a billion dollars and you have to send them four things. Oh, we are unless, doing a billion. Yeah. Unless I think we're even right now, dude. You can quickly answer this last question before Mike gets it. Oh, cool. and this last question is: This is for ten points. What was the name of the boy that was killed in Matawan Creek during the shark attacks of 1916? The <laughs> oh young my gosh. boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, Lester. No, shh. Was his full name? What? Come on. Yeah. Okay, I'll give that to you. <laughs> I wanted his full name, but Lester, I'll I'll give you credit. That's pretty. I good. can't say Les- the full name. Ten Lester points. Stillwell. Yeah, that's like a North Korean three pointer. You owe Jeff a billion dollars <laughs> and four grateful things. Yes. Dang it! Four things. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's do a couple of sort of questions. Let's just do a few because um, Jesse's trying to sleep, and I got this party going on above me. So let's just do a handful if you guys are okay with that. Sure. Uh, Subscriber questions. Want to start there? Because I do. Sure. This one is from subscriber Megan Alana. It's kind of like one word. I don't know if it's two people or if that's first last name. I'll just say Megan. I live in South Arizona, and this week the white-crowned sparrows have returned over winter here. While a very common bird, their lovely songs echo around the neighborhood, heralding that cooler weather is ahead and the heat is almost over, even if the highs are still in the 90s. Really painting the picture there for us. Yeah, it's very nice. Do you have a migratory animal that you get excited to see when they first arrive because they mark the changing of the seasons? Definitely. For me, it's red wing red wing blackbirds. Yeah, that's mine too. Yeah, just that call when you start hearing it, it just feels like spring's right around the corner. So that's I think my if answer. I lived on like the Pacific coast, it'd for sure be the gray whale migration. But yeah, I don't. that'd be cool. Oh yeah. I'm going to go with, it's kind of like the reverse of this, but when all the bugs are gone in winter, uh, that's yeah, pretty that's great. That's a good one. Yeah, that it's not nice. exactly like migrational, migratory, but. Yeah, it's just yeah. they're all dead. Yep. <laughs> uh, next question. This is from Turner. 
You can have an all-expenses-paid vacation wherever you can drive. But the whole time you're on the road trip, there and back, you have to listen to Life is a Highway by Rascal Flats on repeat. Where do you go? How far do you think you could make it? Like like Walmart, like 10 minutes away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That'd uh, be no, tough. I'm yeah. going... I would probably do Vegas. Like you can have a pretty sweet Vegas trip and that's, that's five true. hours. Yeah. Uh, All expenses paid. $200,000 yeah. in casino losses. The funny losses. thing is like m- the way my koala brain works, I honestly don't think I would learn the words of the song besides just life is a highway. <laughs> <laughs> what if you just pick Wendover? Because you kind of like. Go, I can do five hours. I don't Vegas. think I could do that. But I if you could. It. Do it. I'd go crazy. All right. Especially Next the question. Rascal Flats version. So this is from Josh. If y'all could choose a bird to enlarge, to be big enough to ride like a steed into battle, which bird would y'all choose? I'm picking a golden eagle. I know it's a boring answer, but that's... Or maybe it'd be cooler to pick like a cassowary. Like a hummingbird. You can pretty much ride one of those already. Yeah, that's a good answer. Hummingbird's great because they can like hover. That'd be yeah. a good strategic. But it would just be so, so. They could like drain their blood out with their. It would just like need to feed all the time. Yeah, but if it drank blood, that would work really well. Yeah. Right. All right. All right. Okay, and then a few Instagram questions. So Nick Speaker asks, "Can you explain why Pippin is a better character than Mary?" <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Uh, yeah, I can't. Mike, we can. We could easily, yeah. I do it once a year. We do it. I yeah. mean, he convinces the Ents to go see all the disaster, and the Ents take out Isengard for one thing. Yeah, I don't even fight you guys on this anymore because you've kind of convinced me. And Mary didn't want to share his food with the Ents after all that work, too. The week. no, he didn't. Pippin steals the Palantir and looks into it and convinces Sauron that he has the ring. Mary yeah. ever do anything like that? That is not to smart. my recollection. Mary think, does help with the witch king or whatever, though. So that's a good point for Mary. This is very movie centric, too. So that's what books I was are a say, whole like, other. Yeah. I think when you're looking at the movies, Pippin's a better character in the books. For me, it's Mary. <laughs> that's just me. Uh, Jesse Wraith <laughs> wants to know if we got attacked and our arm got completely mangled and you couldn't use it anymore, would you chop it off or keep your arm that you can't use? Chop. Uh, I chop. Chop. Yeah. Me too. I'd chop and hope I get a robot arm. That's the thing. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Or like ice powers and an ice arm. Or just a hook. Yeah. yeah. Or modular so you can like switch it out. You could have a crab claw like we were talking in that one episode. Or yeah. like a gun. I know yeah. someone who that happened to with a lion. So yeah, we got to do that story at some point. Yeah, I, mean, I could probably have him on. Dana Ugg 30, would you date a girl who kisses her parents on the mouth? Uh, I would think it's pretty weird. <laughs> like, that would be kind of weird for me. Yeah, I think I've n- realized that culturally it's like kissing is like, much bigger deal in America than a lot of other yeah. places. So especially help if they're foreign. They're just totally. kind of like, oh, they got different rules. If they're from a different culture, it wouldn't bother me at all. But I've but learned to be one. like, yeah. you know, people are showing affection. It's not that big of a deal. Totally. I yep. I would do it. But it does seem weird. You would but do it. But it would be a little weird. To I mom? Would, I, no. <laughs> I would date that person, but it would <laughs> it would feel a little weird to me. <laughs> My rule would be don't do it in front of me. Actually, you know what? Just go for it. Just Mac. Yeah, yeah I don't think it's a deal breaker. It would be a no. little weird, though. But, like, Tom Brady does it, and I love that guy. So, Would you Fair date enough. him? I would. I mean, he got a lot <laughs> going for him. All right. Two more. Angie Page 2 asks, any advice for solo travelers? I want to travel to a few parks, but I have no friends that like the outdoors. My advice would just be go for it. Don't be like, yeah. you know, go to these parks. You've heard us tell you how to be prepared. So, like, just do it, and you'll see some really cool places. Don't don't be dependent on other people to go to the places you want to see. Totally. Some of my best trips have been solo trips. And, like, 
Maybe you'll meet friends while you're there. You know, you just never know. Yeah. I was asking Mike today what his like ideal trip is. And he'd be, he's like, just like being in a house by myself where no yeah. one knows to contact me. <laughs> yeah. Like going up to the fridge to get some lasagna is his oh. ideal trip. Oh, yeah. oh man. Oh, man. <laughs> Stop giving me a boner. <laughs> Um, all right. Caleb M. Gillen asked, how did Jeff like Cincinnati? I loved it. Really good barbecue. Um, I had a fun time watching the Bengals. I'm pretty into their football team this year. And I didn't get the full skyline chili experience. They put it on hot dogs and I guess they put their chili on noodles there. So you get like spaghetti with spaghetti. Chili Interesting. On it. Yeah, huh. <laughs> and it's just advertised everywhere in Cincinnati. Like, every bus has Skyline Chili on it. The zoo, awesome zoo, Skyline Chili there. Like, they love that stuff. So I wow. I need to go back and get the whole chili experience. Have you had it, Mike? Yeah, yeah, I've been it's there. The spaghetti? It's spaghetti? Uh-huh, it's really good. I like it. I had a really great experience with it. My friend Todd, who came with me, like, took one bite and was just like, that's disgusting and just couldn't really? even believe i ate anymore yeah what the heck todd that yeah, sounds gross to me but sorry cincinnati i like chili i'm a chili all right <laughs> chili guy <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right is that it for questions yeah okay well i'm not gonna really make us go through how much do we like this animal because we already know it's 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10, and 9. Well, let's make Mike answer. Mike, where are you at on grizzly bears right now? I'm going to say 9. I think you had it. You you had me right there. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just my cool. number two overall. Yeah. Fat number Bear Week did a lot me. to reinforce my enjoyment. Oh, yeah. All right. My appreciation. Yeah. Well, if you guys can hear this party going, hopefully you've been able to just kind of like have some nice background music to this episode. <laughs> If not, I'm probably going to go figure out what's going on and see if I can join in, quiet down a little bit or join in. Maybe it's a bunch <laughs> of bears doing that little dance. Oh, that sure sounds cool. like it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, for listening. Again, if you are interested in more content, we have subscription channels both on Patreon and on our Apple Grizz Club. It's 10 bucks a month for either of those to get access to our bonus episodes. Any more, 10 bucks a month doesn't really buy you much, but it buys you a ton of extra content for Tooth and Claw. And it helps just support us, which we honestly appreciate. Like it's, it like truly has changed our lives. So, and that's from our subscribers. Like uh, we owe them everything. So yeah, uh, if you feel like subscribing, do it. We'd love to see you on there. And also we have some new merch and I really like the quality of this merch. We have Dana, who's been helping us with social media, helping us out with the merch. So check out our store. Buy as much as you can, have possibly can. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sell your car. Uh, yeah. No, actually, like, I'm not really even sure how much money we'll make off of it, but I just want people to, like, be able to have, like, our shirts be like one of their favorite shirts so we yeah we upped it in quality and uh we're pretty excited about it so go check it out and yeah oh and also i wanted to say if you had any most people had a really good experience with our last store but if you had any issues please dm like my personal account and i can get you taken care of all right um that's it for this episode. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Wes. And Good job. Yeah, I like the part guys. about the bear. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was my favorite part, too. <laughs> I like the right. two elements. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. We'll see see ya. Bye.